All right, everybody, Hobby Talk with AMG, episode 30, a very special edition of this episode because Carlos is in rare form because, number one, it was a beautiful day outside. I even I even went to do take out the trash and do my errands early because it's beautiful and it's sunny out here. It's pretty good. But I it got is. here, Sherry from AMG. Sherry, how is it out in your neck of the woods? Is it nice today? It is beautiful today. It's uh, sunny. It's supposed to be up to, I think, about 18, so it's going to be a glorious Tuesday. Right now, that is perfect. Perfect start to the May weather. We'll take it because uh, around here, as soon as it flips the switch and it becomes humid, that is not so great. Right now, though, it's nice. It's really yeah. nice. We'll take it. So let me get the little scrolling ticker across the bottom there. AMG Sports Cards, the website, amgcollectibles.ca. We always recommend if there is something you want to hear about or something you want to know about that you need a quicker answer to, use those down there. It's also in the description. So I'm, I'm mentioning that off the top so that you've got it right away. And then we'll mention it again at the end of the show. So as I said, we've got a little special edition here. No bonus player this week, and the collector of the scallops, the collector of this people is still on location. He <laughs> will return at some point in the not too distant future, but but for now, we'll uh, we'll hold down the fort because we've got a couple of things we want to talk about. So let me start with this. Let's do this first. Uh, it's still the beginning of the month. However, there is the trade night and the card show that will be happening this month. Can you give me the dates on those two things, please? Yeah. So the trade night will be Friday, May twenty fourth, and then the card show followed on Saturday morning, May twenty fifth. And then for June, we will have a show and a trade night. The trade night will be June 28th, and the card show will be June 29th. Perfect. And as those are generally a good uh, rule of thumb. We mentioned usually it's right towards the end of the month. We will give you a couple of reminders along the way. So we thought we would start early this time just to give you a little heads up on that, especially since we're heading into the summer months. You know, Be aware and pay attention for scheduling and all that so that you know what's coming ahead of time. But the May one, we at least know what's going to happen with that one. So let me grab a couple of comments from the last episode. Thank you, as always, for leaving comments. We do appreciate it. Uh, we're Subscriptions are now up over 280, so let's keep moving closer and closer to 300. Let's work on that. I want to beat the PSA Canada one because that's goal number yeah. one is to beat the PSA Canada one. Let's get past that one, and let's build on that. First one uh, was Kung Fury 69 here uh, earlier in the week. It was, I missed Carlos. I must have visited the booth like four times. Sherry's so nice. So there you go. So thank you for the comment for Sherry. Also, uh, unfortunately, like, well, fortunately and unfortunately, Next time around, now that we have a little bit of a cadence, it was easier this time because Sherry is actually able to be at the booth. We were able to coordinate a little bit better. I was around, but obviously I'm not working the booth. But I was around a fair bit of times uh, throughout the different days. But we'll see if we can organize something to be a little bit more. If you want to pop by and say hello, I'll try to make some time so that it's uh, clear. Because mostly I was just making the rounds. I was around the show throughout the throughout the good chunk of it. But don't try to find me in the morning. Strong recommendation, don't try to find me in the morning. Carlos is busy having brunch. Yeah, it will not happen. No, no except for Sundays. No. Sundays hotel checkout time. You might find you around lunch. Well, they, they basically say, "No, you must leave. You yeah. must leave before morning." So, so I said, "Fine, then I will." Yeah. Uh, the hotel, the hotel's good though. They usually hold the bags and everything, so it's uh, yeah. I, no complaints for me. The hotel's getting a good time. <laughs> Although I will tell you one quick uh, hotel story from the mm -hmm. expo. The hotel I'll stay at, which I will not disclose, uh, <laughs> but it is not one of the expo hotels, one of the official ones. Yeah. However. The last couple of shows, spring and fall, there's always a dance competition there, Sherry. Like, there, there's literally, like, they've got, like, a little conference center thing in the back. And then both times I was like, okay, this happened in the fall and now in the spring. It's like, yeah. and I'm literally like, and and, you, and basically you see these, you know, car fulls of, the, of these girls. And they're all wearing, like, these jackets. And then I'm sitting there like, oh, it's a dance competition thing again? <laughs> really? They, didn't they do this in the fall? You got to They literally have like I don't know what it is. It's it's yeah. literally a dance competition. I was just sitting there like, and all you see is you. I was literally opening the door one of the days to start heading over, and all you hear is a couple of like a couple of small girls like screaming and running down the hallway. I'm sitting there like, <laughs> oh, dance competitions. <laughs> okay, sure. That's so it's like all I got. So I was you know trying to dodge and weave. Yeah, as they ran down hallways, I was like, okay. That's two two times in a row, I was like. Interesting. Go on. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. So th that, that, that's Carlos's experience. Yeah. Um, so okay. It's a good spot. Anyway. I, I guess so. Look, I can't complain. Uh, I was able to get it upgraded to the suite and I had a living room where I was able to do my thing. So I was like, I, I can accept, I can accept a little inconvenience for, for the other yeah. amenities that were made available. So oh, we're okay there. Second one is Gotham Collections is always very supportive. So thank you. Great video as always. Thank you for the support as always. So both of those get hearts done. So thank you, thank you for the comments. I wanted to make sure I read them off before we continue. Okay, 
A couple of things I want to talk about here. I think this will be a little bit of fun. We're gonna I'm gonna read off a couple of different products that are gonna be coming into the store. Different quantities. I do strongly recommend as always. If you if you are concerned, you want to make sure you can get your hands on something, reach out ahead of time just to see what availability is. You know, if you're curious about pricing and everything, reach out directly through the communication or call the store. We yeah. put the little thing at the end, it's got the info. Use the communication that is provided to you. So we've got 2023 Panini National Treasures Racing, obviously National Treasures, kind of a high-end brand there. That that could be, should be interesting. That won't be one of the ones we'll feature today, but I do want to mention it. One that we'll quickly touch on briefly is a 2024 Bowman Baseball, which is a classic one if you like your prospecting. Okay. Uh, I think it's a cool product, but it's one of those things where like some of these players, I just so that we're all on the same page, some of these players will not be anything for years. So some of them could be your next superstars, but we won't know for several times. However, if you are into the prospecting thing or you study the minor leagues and everything, it could be really interesting for you. So if you like to prospect a bit, that's a great product for that. There was a nice CNN when I was going through the list, the AI technology prospects one. I don't know if you've really? seen that one. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? Um, the happy days background staple bowman ai advanced stats to predict future stars it's, it's kind of interesting oh. okay advanced stats look yeah. at this point you throw ai and like it's become the the buzzword that you throw oh. in by the way i remember there i don't remember the year i, I want to say it was like in the 90s they had one where they did like a projected future stats kind of thing mm -hmm. they were doing that back then but now it's ai now, yeah, now yeah. we add ai to it and it's oh now it's fine now it's Didn't brand new that? i scrolled back and i was like did i just read that correctly ai oh boy you wait until you wait until next year when that's the top so chat GPT you yeah. know, projected set. It's like we may as well get a branded one. The chat GPT one going. Yeah. So we've got the hobby and the jumbo. So you've got the two different variations of it if you do want to pursue it and chase after it. Uh, check it out. Uh, as always, we'll include, not for these two, but we'll include some link. Well, actually, no, I've got a link for this one. So I'll include a link to this one as well if you want to check that one. I won't feature it, but I'll include a link in the description for you if you want to check it out from Beckett's site. Uh, we've got some supplies here that we want to talk about. Uh, so first one that I do want to talk about briefly is the 2023 Marvel Annual. I don't have too much to say on it because I'm not a big um, comic book guy. However, I did take a look at the page. Again, the link will be included in the description for you so that you get a chance to check it out. It looks like some neat cards, especially if you're into the comics. Mm -hmm. So you've got a lot of the standards that you would expect. you got your Spider-Man. The art looks pretty decent on it, which is really a key if you want to have some cool like Marvel type cards. You want to have some art. Uh, I think this is a cool idea. Even again, not being a huge uh, follower of a lot of the comics, I have been around the fan expos and things like that in the past where they've got that. So this one here, you've got the artist. So like, for example, the artist of Scarlet Witch, boom, you've got an autographed version of it, which I think is kind of a cool thing if you're a big fan of the comics to have some of that. You got Doom here, suspended animation. You've got numbered. Uh, this one here, obviously the, the image here is a little flat. It's not going to show. This looks like they're using um, basically the kind of foil. I think that's going to shine pretty well, basically based on the way it is. It's just a mock-up. It's flat, but I think it would look pretty cool in, in hand, I would say. Yeah, I agree. So here's another one. There's another great art card. So like I said, you've got some interesting looking cards in here. You've got blasters and hobbies. So you've got a couple of configurations to it. 100 card set size. Check it out. If you're curious about the checklist and everything, it is here. And you've got all the variants and parallels. Like I said, I'll include a link in the description for you if you're more interested in getting a little more detail. I think that'd be kind of fun if you are into the comics. Now, the one that I do want to spend a little bit of time on, because I think it's still fun, and I'll we'll do a little story time with Carlos. Uh, we've got the 2024 SP Game Use Golf. Yeah. Now, I'll go through it a little bit. I'm not going to go through every single line and everything, but there are a few things that I want to touch on here that'll be kind of fun. And again, this will include the checklist and everything. So link will be in the description for you. Uh, I think it's a great idea to have the SP game used. It's an interesting brand to have with this. Now, Upper Deck's been off and on with golf. It's always an interesting thing because obviously they started with golf back in 2001. They did that right in the middle of Tiger's Peak, which was a perfect time for them to try to reintroduce the product. They did it for a couple of years and then it went away. Now, currently, it's interesting because, and I think this impacted the checklist. So that's why when I get into the checklist here in a moment, I think that impacted it. Obviously, Live Golf exists and they're going to be releasing that Live Golf product. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Phil Mickelson, the Brooks Kepka, and some major champions are there. And again, I think that affected the checklist for this. That isn't to say the checklist is bad, but I think it's very interesting, the choices that were made. And I'll give you a couple of interesting examples. So first of all, you got the SP game used, like the base, base set here. You've got some parallels of what you would expect. Pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy. You've got autograph variations of it numbered. Makes total sense. 
Uh, you've got the authentic rookies here, kind of your jersey autograph, but in this case, you know, polo shirt autograph kind of deal. We've got that going on. Ink fabrics, we've got that as well. Ink drivers looks interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, it's fantastic that they got Gary Player still in there at this point. Gary yeah. Player is not a young man. The fact, <laughs> that, the fact that he's still signing or doing anything, I think yeah. is fantastic, but it's very cool they've got him in here as well. Yeah. You got the Tiger Woods there. There's a Brad Harlan special, if ever there was one. Totally, totally. Now, here we've got a Michelle Wee Back Nine Fabrics. They've used the Back Nine Fabrics before, but yeah. I'll touch on that again. It'll go back to what the conversation I want to have about the checklist. So we'll right. come to that here in a second. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Justin Thomas. That looks cool. If you're going to include the little Adidas logos and stuff, I think that's neat. I think that'll be kind of an interesting little chase. So the combination, the way it works, is you've got five cards per pack and hobby. So one pack per box. So it's one of those little, basically one box kind of things, but you get five cards in it, 10 boxes per case. The set size is 145 cards. We're not including the subsets and everything and the various inserts. Mm -hmm. But in each, inside of every hobby box, you should expect two base cards, but then three autograph or memorabilia cards. So you're getting mostly memorabilia and autographs in a box. So yeah. that's going to be played into the price, which I think will make a lot more sense, especially when you're including that. Now let's talk about the checklist here for a moment. The autographs, memorabilia and all that, I think is fine. I, obviously, SP game use, you got to have that. That's important. Now, the checklist here. Basically, the way they broke it down is they broke it down into three pieces. You got the base, the initial base cards to start off with, and I'll touch on a few of these names here in a second. But then right after that, you got your rookies, which again makes total sense. And then you've got your authentic rookies, which kind of your autograph shirt kind of deal, which I think, again, makes total sense. But so 145 cards total. Your first 50 cards are kind of your base. And that's why I said a moment ago, remember what I said about live golf and how I think this impacted the, the checklist. Now, I don't know if it's still the case. I think earlier, I don't think the PGA Tour necessarily has like a licensing agreement similar to like the Players Association or that. I, you know, right. maybe it's changed. I don't know. I feel like they do more individual deals with some of these folks, but I'm not sure exactly how that goes anymore. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I can, I can put in some questions and ask. I'd be curious if they're yeah. able to get like a license or if they have to reach out to certain people to be able to get them in here especially mm -hmm. retired players or players who really aren't around anymore. So start off the top. Now, card number one is Tiger Woods, of course. Makes total <laughs> sense. However, here's where it gets interesting. And this is why I wanted to kind of bring this up. Okay, card number two is David Duval. Now, yeah. if, you're, if you're a golf fan who enjoyed that early 2000s, late 90s period, especially, so right at Tiger's apex, I was watching almost every event because obviously it was must-see TV at that time. <laughs> so I know a lot of the players from that time period because I was basically rooting against Tiger every week. That was yeah. so I knew all the other people that were facing yeah. off against Tiger. David Duval was a former number one. He was actually an excellent player who had a tremendous run and then suddenly fell off a cliff. Mm -hmm. But he fell off a cliff right after winning a major championship. Like, but he had been number one in the world, winning mm -hmm. tournaments left, right, and center for a little while there. So David Duval is a great name. Card number three, though, card number three is fascinating, and I'll tell you why. That is Chris DeMarco. Now, if you don't know who Chris DeMarco is, you're not alone because most people don't. However, no Chris DeMarco was an interesting character because he was one of the folks who at least posed a little bit of challenge to Tiger back in Tiger's heyday. Yeah. Now, I remember, as soon as I saw that name, I was like, Chris DeMarco. Like, I don't know if you know that Star Wars meme. That's a name I hadn't heard in a long time. <laughs> yeah. and, and it is because, now, I think these days he's on the Champions Tour because obviously that was, you know, more than 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but Chris DeMarco's claim to fame, he did win multiple PGA uh, tournaments. Uh, he was he turned professional in 1990, so he was a long time touring pro by the time that we're you know the era that we're talking about. Right. But he's notable for two things. Well, yeah, two things specifically. He actually was runner up in three different major championships. He never won a major championship, but he was second place or tied for second place in three out of the four majors, and it was right around during the same time period. He was second in the Masters in 2005 to Tiger, second in the Open Championship in 2006. He was with other players to Tiger. And he also was tied for second in the PGA championship in 2004. So 2004, 2005, 2006, that was kind of his apex when he was really challenging for some, you know, uh, major championships. So he was in contention. He was actually one of the guys that was in the mix there, obviously second place, you know, that's pretty good. You, yeah. you, you're, you're right on the cusp. Yeah. And actually in the masters, he lost to Tiger in a playoff. So that was one of the more famous ones where he, like, he was head to head. He was right, right there at the end with Tiger, and he had a chance to win in the playoff. Again, I was rooting against Tiger, so I'm rooting for whoever's there. Chris DeMarco, let's go. <laughs> I, I just thought it was fantastic that I was like, oh, Chris DeMarco, of all the people. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. But again, that does lead me to quite kind of question here. This is where I kind of think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, 
I won't question too much. And this is where I would love to ask Upper Deck. Yeah. How far down the depth chart do we have to go to? Listen, I can give you Chris DeMarco stories because I was watching the temper, but I, I got to reach almost 20 years of the past. I got to go way in the way back machine over here to be able to give you some Chris DeMarco background to be able to explain to you why it's kind of an interesting choice for me right. and a fun choice. Yeah. But how the hell did we end up at Chris DeMarco in a 50 car checklist? <laughs> I love the facts. It's definitely interesting. Yeah, I just thought it was fascinating. I was like, look, uh, we've got legends on here. We've got Gary Player on here. Yeah. Perfect. Gary Player makes sense. You know, Jack Nicholas and Annika Sorenstam, who, who was a name in the in the ladies game. So yeah. like a bunch of these names, I know Julie Inkster, who was a mm -hmm. Hall of Famer in the in the women's side of things. And like a lot of these folks, I know Fred Couples, John Daly, like I, Nancy Lopez. I know the but. I'm seeing a heavy dose of legends, a heavy yeah. dose. Of, I'm like, what about the current PGA people? Like, <laughs> it's only a 50 card checklist for the first. Obviously, right. we got the rookies. Mm -hmm. We got a stack of rookies, and I'm like, we don't have a lot of the current folks. Like, where are the current folks? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That, I never, I never really question. thought about that when I was going through it. Uh, it's just a question I have because, like I said, I know a bunch of these names, but I haven't been watching PGA consistently in years. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I, and if I can go in the Wayback Machine ten years ago, I could have pulled these same names ten years ago, and they still would have been relevant. So, so I'm like, <laughs> why in the year 2024? Why are we still? Why am I still seeing these names? Tom Lehman on here? Like, I'm like, I know who these people are, but they were also around ten years ago, all of them, or at least a good chunk of these. It's oh, kind of that's, interesting. Yeah, that's a, that's a good little tidbit this morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I will say Michelle Wee is also on there, but Michelle Wee is effectively retired. I think she's tried to do a little mini comeback. She mm -hmm. had a little run. She's an unfortunate story. If you're ever curious, obviously she was a big name some years back, but she was, um, it was very unfortunate the way that worked out. I think her parents probably pushed her too hard. And then a combination of just the way that was set up. Uh, she never had the chance to reach her potential because she was supposed yeah. to be that superstar, but they mm -hmm. tried to make her into the female Tiger Woods and do the whole thing. And it never quite got there. But she yeah. had success. She won tournaments, but it never got to where I think they thought it would. That's unfortunate. Definitely. Now, one more uh, one more little note that I want to give you, and this is a little fun one. So I mentioned the the checklist, and I mentioned the names on here. I include, and one of the names that I named off was John Daly. Now, <laughs> this is this is fun because as I scan through, this, I find these things, Sherry. These things make me happy. I find these things. All right. So I looked at this. I recognized a bunch of names. I thought that was kind of cool. I thought it was interesting the way that that checklist worked out. But then we yeah. get into the rookies. We get into that section of it and everything. And amongst the authentic rookies, so this is the autograph shirt folks that are involved in it. Fascinating to me. There is a John Daly the second. Oh, really? <laughs> John Daly has a son who actually made it onto this checklist. That I was, and I was like, I didn't know there was a John Daly Jr.? This is John Daly the second. That's funny. so. There's two spots on there. So card number eighty-seven is John Daly the second, and then also you've got a uh, John Daly the second at card number one thirty-two. So you're actually right. doubling up here. You've got two John Daly juniors. So apparently he's uh, so apparently he I think he's about twenty years old, give or take, uh, but he's made it onto this checklist, and that is fascinating. I think that's yeah, an that interesting, interesting little thing. I didn't know there was a junior, um, and no. now I'm amused and terrified. <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know too much about him i just think it was fascinating that there is a there is a john daly the second out here and he's yeah. on this checklist two times yeah but, uh, very interesting but look it, all it, i'm gonna say is it's gonna be fun i i like it <laughs> i'm not morally opposed but i'm just fascinated like i said I, sometimes folks it is worthwhile like i said i'm including the links for you Mm -hmm. go to the checklist and look at this stuff. Sometimes yeah. you'll, if you, especially if you know the sport and everything, you'll, you'll find these little fascinating tidbits. But yeah, as soon as I saw like, there's a junior. Yeah. There's a second one. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like fascinating. And obviously you got the cast of characters that you would expect. Yeah. So nothing unusual there. I, I feel almost like, um, I, I don't, like I said, I don't know if he's any good. I have no idea, but I do think it is interesting, especially since he's included in the uh, autograph side of everything. I feel like this is an opportunity for John Daly and John Daly Jr. Uh, dual auto. Oh, yeah. Come on, Upper Deck. Let's go. If you got if you got them both, you may as well have a John Daly and John yeah. Daly duel. Let's to God. Let's do another look through there. The opportunity is there, guys. Like, you know. 
<laughs> so I think that'll be kind of uh, I think that'll be kind of fun. We'll see how that one works. Yeah, and even looking at the base spectrum checklist, uh, we've got a couple different ones. So I think there's some singles that I may get some entertainment from. I, I got to get my Chris DeMarco. Not, not like since I, now I gave the whole story, I got to get my Chris <laughs> yeah. DeMarco now going. On. Absolutely, it's kind of like uh, Cheese String them on. Got to get that one too. <sighs> Let me tell you, the Cheese String them on, <laughs> such glory. Uh, look, I don't want to spoil this. But I, I have the Japanese version. Yeah. The the English version may be forthcoming. So I may be able to reveal the English to string them on in the not yeah. too distant future. Don't want to spoil it. Not yet. Not yet. We'll get there. Oh, definitely. But once I make it a thing, Sherry, we're going with it. Once I make it a thing, we're going with it all the it's way. Not. Seeing it through. But now John now John Daly Jr. And now I'm fascinated. Yeah, now, yeah. I, I need to know more. I need I need to and stay away from the drink, young man. Stay away. <laughs> Learn from the lessons of dad. D don't do it. Yeah. Uh, what I'll be curious about, though, is I'll be curious if his game resembles his dad. Obviously, mm -hmm. I didn't know this so going yeah. into it, so I had no idea. Now I'm kind of curious. I wonder if he, uh, I wonder if he's a long hitter like Dad is, mm -hmm. because that would be kind of interesting if he can incorporate, if if he's able to incorporate the elements of his dad's game that were really good, with the part and avoid the parts that were a little bit self-destructive yeah. and problematic. Then you never know. Maybe the kid, maybe the kid could turn out all right. That, that might be kind of interesting. It'll be. I, I, I would love to see it. I think it'd be good for golf, and I think people would enjoy having another generation of Don Daly. Oh yeah, around yeah. and contending, and you know, participating in it. I think it'd be kind of cool. But no promises. I'm not going to put that on him. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if he's able to make something out of it. I, I just, uh, I just pulled up a little fact there. The father and son duo beat Tiger Woods and his son Charlie to the 2021 PNC Championship championship title yeah i think uh i think it'll be interesting now in fairness though charlie i want to say because i think john john daly the second i guess they're going they're not going with junior i guess they're going with the second yeah, yeah. but john daly the second i think is 20 so charlie i think is a little bit younger still yeah. but uh he's shown some promise too look yeah. it, you you better believe if upper deck's going to stick with this mm -hmm. there will be a charlie woods card coming forthcoming oh, yeah, like as yeah. soon as that yeah. kid's in contention as soon as he's in position to get into one of these, they're like, let's go. Yeah. Tiger Charlie duel. That one, I guarantee. Like, Upper Deck's already salivating at mm -hmm. the thought of how quickly can we get this duel autograph going. Absolutely. If they get, yeah. if they could get LeBron and Bronny, they're like, Tiger and Charlie, let's go. Yeah. And then uh, another uh, little tidbit that I came up, John Daly had also posted, I don't know when it was, um, but he said he's followed in his father's footsteps in another way, his big hitting style. Um, his father said, I can't keep up with him now. He hits it so far. <laughs> mm, this, this, that that could make things really interesting. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Like somewhere out there, someone is like, oh, my God, prospecting John Daly Jr. Let's <laughs> <Yeah. go." laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It'll it'll yeah. be, like I said, as soon as I found this out now, I am riveted. I, I am know. fascinated. I am yeah. fascinated. That, that made this a little bit more interesting for me, Sharon. Just a little Indeed. bit more interesting. Yeah. So, I think that's so like that's a fun one. If you enjoy golf, some of these are fun. Don't take it too seriously. Enjoy it for what it is. I think there are some neat cards here. I will <laughs> say there's some neat looking cards in here. Yeah. Um, I think there'll definitely be some chase worthy singles. Yeah. Uh, I would be curious. I would really love to talk to uh, the manager in charge of building this checklist. So I'd be curious what considerations played into this checklist. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, I think there's some interesting pieces. We, we highlighted a few that I think are interesting, but also at the same time, like, yeah, I feel like it became kind of legend heavy and really leaning on it. I wonder if it's a licensing issue. I wonder if it's a question. Maybe they weren't able to get enough of the current because there are enough current golfers right now active on the tour that you would think they'd be able to fill in the 50 set checklist, sprinkling in the Gary players and the Nancy yeah. Lopez's and those ones. I would think, but maybe I'm wrong. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, that's what, that's what leads me to think and wonder if there's a difference in the way they do their licensing, if it's not person by person, and maybe they were able to get these people and maybe not so much certain other folks, because there's other ones, um, even with, like I said, they included uh, several in the ladies tour, yeah. but there's a bunch of Korean ladies who did very well for a long time on the ladies tour. Yeah. And I didn't catch at first glance, a bunch of those names. So I would wonder if maybe they just weren't able to get them to agree to be on a card. Yeah, and I'd be maybe. curious if maybe that was a, because they were winning major championships. So it's not, so they are kind of relevant to to that side, especially if you're going to include folks from the past. I For would sure. think that they would make it onto this checklist. But it's kind of interesting mm -hmm. what uh, what came about as a result of this. So anyway, interesting. Uh, nonetheless, I will say uh, it is a fun little product if you do enjoy it. And it's something if you're into the golf side of things, I think it'd be a fun one to chase if that's what you're into. 
Definitely. But you want to make sure we touch on that. All right. So real quick, uh, we'll wind her down here shortly. But before we do, uh, and you see, we managed. Like, look, we managed even without the Blair and the Collector of the Scallops. You see? Yeah. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't need them today. Not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> Listen, I, it's like Blair and Steve better be on notice. Like, this, this better be a lesson. Like, I, I can make a lot of hay on John Daly Jr. and Chris DeMarco. Yeah. Think about it, guys. <laughs> Think about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Now, I wanted to ask you a question. So this is based on, obviously, we already had the Spring Expo. We already talked about that. However, there is something I did want to touch on that I thought uh, maybe you could give us a little insight into. Uh, so when AMG set up their booth, uh, you guys had your booth set up a certain way. And I've seen this at Expo. There's a lot of different configurations of it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, one part of the booth was set up with a lot of the wax and things that, uh, you know, didn't necessarily move in the store, but you had an opportunity to bring a bunch of it, give people an opportunity to get it at a good price. But your the goal was to clear it out. The goal was, hey, guys, you take these boxes so we don't have to cart them back. Yeah. So that was one half of the booth. The other half of the booth had showcases, and definitely there were singles in there, and obviously you'll sell to people. Like somebody comes by and throws money at you, you will accept, you will accept and, and give them a card. But that wasn't the focus. The focus was on the buying side. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about the thought process of deciding to use the booth space you had to focus more on the buying side versus um, filling up showcases to sell. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for X amount of years now, we've pretty well had the exact same booth set up, wax on mm -hmm. one side, singles on the other. Um, usually we'd bring singles that are maybe don't move as quickly in the store and same with the wax or anything that we have in excess of that doesn't move as quickly in the Maritimes um, as they would in Toronto. So. Mm -hmm. Those are always great to bring up and get rid of, like you said, we don't want to cart it back, price drops until it's gone. So <laughs> that's always good there. But as for the buying, um, I did redo the booth this year too. I got some new uh, backdrops, some tablecloths, and we're really focused on the buying. Um, we do get a lot of collections that come into the store, uh, a lot of singles that come into the store. But what we're really looking for are those hard to find items that we don't see come in. Um, it's more basketball that we see, I guess, basketball, football, baseball. Um, and we're not, a, it's not as easily readily available uh, in the Maritimes as it is in Toronto, especially. So those are definitely things that we try to pick up more um, or fast moving items like popular hockey legends, popular young guns. Those are always go to good pur uh, purchases to make. So yeah, we uh, we really try and focus on the buying there to bring more inventory that isn't available to us in the Maritimes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. that makes sense. It's uh, that's why I say like I wanted to touch on it briefly because it is a different philosophy. Yeah, because, and I've seen both, and I've seen both successfully. And obviously, there are folks who will fill up the showcases, but also say, "Yeah, I do buy." Yeah. But in your but in the case of AMG, the focus has been on the buying side more. Yeah. Uh, because you're trying to take care of the store. You're trying exactly. to make sure there is that inventory available for, you know, the people that walk in the door. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to focusing, even though you've got the eBay presence, you've got the website, you've got that component of it. A lot of the, the goal is to have some inventory for the locals that yeah. walk in, kind of reward the folks that patronize the store yeah. with, here's some stuff for you yeah. that isn't immediately going to go on eBay. Yeah, and we want to keep it fresh. We want to be able to turn those showcases more often than not. Um, and, it's, and even eBay, too, if we do end up buying some, taking them and putting them on eBay. But keeping things fresh is uh, how you stay successful, I guess you could say. Because if you have stale product in the showcases each week, yes, the customers are going to come in, but maybe they'll stop coming in. If there's nothing there for them to look at, why would they continue coming back? So making sure nothing goes stale and it's constantly moving is key. Absolutely. Makes sense. I like it. So I look forward now in a couple of weeks when you got the showcases full of Chris DeMarco and John Daly Jr. cards. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be very exciting. Very exciting. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be amazing. And Mike Medano on Wait. the bottom. <laughs> Listen, we, we got this covered. We got, we got all this. This is just be the Carlos showcase. It's like, it's like what? And then we'll have a little cheese string on section there. Like exactly. everything that all the things that I care about will yeah. all be in this showcase. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I do want to finish up on that. So thank you, Sherry. Now, before we go, I will give a little sneak preview to something that we will be bringing up next week. So I, I'll show it. Without too much context, I want to show it to you for those of you that are checking it out on the YouTube, and then we will elaborate next week. 
but I'm going to show you a couple pieces of art. So first is a Crosby McKinnon piece here. We will address this again, okay. but I'm just showing it to you for now. So bear it in mind. And then I'll show you one more Crosby here piece that we're talking about. And we'll discuss this in a little bit more depth next week because we may have ourselves a little special guest who will yeah. be able to talk to us a little bit about this. Yeah. So some nice pieces. And if you like some sports art, I think we will, we'll have a little uh, thing to address on that piece. So yeah. a little sneak preview to something to look forward to. So like I said, look, Blair and like I said, Blair and Steve had better be good. Like we, we got things going on right now. Yeah. Happen. I think it might be too full for them next week. Actually. I think we'll just, we, we might have to bump them. We might, <laughs> we might not have time for them. It's like, it's like, well, now we can't, now we just don't have room for you guys. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> But expect uh, next week, like I said, we'll have that. And then uh, hopefully if everything goes uh, according to plan, maybe we'll have some stuff that came in the shop. This week we didn't have as much of that to emphasize, but we were able to talk more about the products and some of the mm -hmm. things that were coming in as well and give a little background and some story about how uh, the booth configuration comes in because you're going to see a similar booth configuration in the fall. And yeah. we'll talk about that more down the road, but it's just that's kind of the reason why it worked the way that it did. And obviously some items did come in. We get to, did get to share some, and it's a variety. You never know what's going to happen. And yeah. now, like I said, now y'all know where all the Kristen Marcos need to go. Mm -hmm. And like compared to last last show, we had a lot of trades happening or a lot of attempts of trades happening. This show, it was actually a fantastic buying show for us. Um, and I think people are starting to see now more that that is how we're marketing things. We're there to buy. Um, and we get a lot of emails as well. So if you want to stop into the store, send us an email, call us, see us at the Toronto show. Um, we, we want to see your stuff. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. I like it. Perfect. Oh, and so, I should add. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, in regards to the Funko Pops, I had those. I just reminded talking about the booth. The Funko Pops, Trailer Park Boys, we had them on display at the show. Mm -hmm. uh, there was lots of people stopping by, taking a peek at those, which was great. So they will be going live within the next 24 hours on eBay. So check out AMG Collectibles eBay. Um, you can check out our social medias as well. Uh, but they will be on there for purchase. Nice. Link is in the description to the eBay store, so you'll be able to check it out there, which is perfect. So good call out. Good stuff to include that one. So thank you, Sherry. See? Good solid. No no problem. Yeah. We managed the episode. Absolutely. So. I almost perfect. forgot that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you all know. Uh, so thank you to everybody for checking it out. Appreciate the comments as always. Again, feel free to give the feedback in the comments. That is appreciated. The engagement. Let's get the thumbs up as well. And if, you have, if you're on the fence, subscribe. <laughs> Because now we know that this will be the epicenter of the the John Daly Jr. Uh, you know chase. We'll all be able to discuss that at length and and discuss it as a people. Because mm -hmm. now now we need this John Daly squared, uh, this John, John Daly squared card to happen. Yeah. Now we need it now. You got the Charlie Woods Tiger and the John Daly squared. Like we need these things. Absolutely. Upper deck. I am doing your job for you. <laughs> this is gold. It is gold. So that's perfect. So for Sherry, myself, and the AMG store, we thank you for checking this one out. This is episode 30, milestone episode, so we're onward and upward here. Again, the engagement is always appreciated. Thank you very much, and we will catch you in the next one.